question is from Ella Beasley. What are the best weighted exercises for building abs? We have a guide uh, on training your abs, and we talk a lot about you know weighted exercises and how best to build uh, you know abs that show. So this is uh, it's a free guide; doesn't cost anything. It's at mindpumpfree.com. We'll make sure that we link it. But in terms of this question here, okay, why would anybody first off want to build their abs? Um, this is something that I learned later on again in my training career. I was one of those people that I had to get to seven or eight percent body fat to have a six pack. I just I don't store body fat on my arms or my legs. They're almost always lean. But if I do, it's right on my abs. And I just I was not one of those guys that at 10% had a six pack. I had to get lower than that. And even then, when I was relaxed, I didn't have I, I was always envious of those guys that had abs or girls that had abs that you could see when they were relaxed. You know what I mean? They're just walking around with their shirt off and you can see their abs stick out a little bit. And I was like, man, I wish I had that. And I couldn't figure it out. I was doing high rep exercises and you know twists and all these crunches and it just wasn't working. Then I realized, why don't I build them? Like if, if they get a little bigger, they'll stick out more. So that's what I did. I started doing weighted exercises for my abs and they stuck out more to the point now where I have a visible six pack around 10 or 11%. So I don't need to get quite as lean to have those abs show. Now the question is, what are the best weighted exercises? By far, one of my favorite is a good old fashioned decline sit up. Just do a decline sit up, curl your way up real slow and you'll feel those abs build. And it's because the reps are really low. So now to to that, uh, I think it's important to talk about the importance of first making sure that you have good mechanics with abs. Oh, yeah. Because uh, in fact, I got tagged on um, the guys over at Squat University did a a post, and I think it, they uh, the post said something along the lines that that uh, crunches were a waste of a time, waste of time, and um, for most most people are are either hurting themselves or not doing it correctly. And somebody was like, you know, send it right away. Of course, I get tagged or that stuff sent to me. And I said, well, I, I haven't read the post. I don't know what he exactly is talking about, um, but I could make a case for why crunches can be worthless for some people. Some people, uh, in, fact, in fact, when I think about my average client, I would have to say that more than half of them uh, did not do uh, crunches correctly. Uh, most of them uh, were so hip flexor dominant uh, that they were using more of their hip flexors to crunch up or sit up in an exercise. And so if you have really poor mechanics uh, or have or you struggle with feeling uh, ab exercises in your abs and then you go and load it, Ugh, you're, you're going to hurt your back. Yeah, you're going to end up hurt. And that, that's what it actually what the statement was, was that crunches uh, hurt uh, hurt more people's backs than I think than they help people build abs or something along those lines. And so, you know, and, and Sal alluded to our free guide. It addresses that, talks that in there. We also have great videos on our YouTube channel that we talk about addressing that if you have hip flexor dominance and, and how to uh, work on that before you do abs. But that's important. It's important that you get really good non-weighted control of your abs and you can and you can feel your abs working. Because I can make a, a perfect sit-up and, and fail at like five reps by just going slow and controlled and slowly rolling each vertebrae down as I open up and make that extremely difficult and challenging for five to seven reps before I load it. And I think too, like this is one of those muscle groups that commonly like people lose connection with. Mm -hmm. And so it's very easy to think that just going through the, the range of motion that you think is preferable for a crunch or uh, that just like a hanging ab, you know, leg raise is going to start building that back up again, but you don't have that like connection established to where you're actually directing the work to the abs. And so to, to establish that again is, is paramount before adding load, much like any other muscle or anything else that you've, you're probably more familiar with, like in a curl, if I'm not if I'm not feeling my bicep get involved, you're, you're, you're probably going to try and stop and figure that out. So, uh, yeah. So here's the problem though. People do feel their abs, but they're not working their abs. Their abs are as a stabilizer, but not working them right, through a full right. range of motion. In fact, you take the average person, have them stand up straight and just tell them to do pelvic tilts. See if they can do that. See if they can articulate right, their just pelvis. Bracing. Yeah, just take their pelvis and go from sticking their butt out to tucking their tailbone without you know having to use their hips. Just articulate that and they still can't do it. Um, this is super obvious when you see people do leg raises. Watch someone do a leg raise, especially the one where you brace your arms at the bottom and you bring their knees up. And what they're doing is they're just using their hip flexors. 
So you have to understand what the abs do. The abs, when they contract, they fold you at your lumbar spine, not at your hips. And that's the thing. The average person watches a person yeah, fold. They, they look very similar if you don't know what you're looking that's for. That's right. They just see someone fold forward and they say, oh, that's an ab. You can fold forward at the hips and not, not fold forward at the lumbar. Mm -hmm. So it's really about working through that lumbar, getting the lumbar spine to uh, flex and then extend. That's what the abs do, not at the hips. Yeah. So once you figure that out, then you can start to add resistance. In fact, most people just doing that will give them all the resistance they need. Oh, yeah. I mean, even myself. I, no, I, I, I openly admit that I probably neglect my ab training more than anything else. We've talked about this before. And so I know when I kick it back up, I mean, my abs are so weak that a doing five to seven like perfect sit-ups is so much load. Sure. You know, just me rolling up the spine and slowly sitting up, I mean, that, that'll blast my abs within yeah. five to seven reps. So... You know, it, it doesn't take much uh, when you do it correctly. Now, if you're somebody who's been training your abs and you have, you've got great control of it and you can do, you know, 15, 20 perfect setups, no problem, then okay, well then, you know, loading it I think is is totally fine and encouraged and a good idea because a lot of people don't do that. And to, I would agree with Sal with what, what, what exercise I would start with.